Well, good morning, good morning. How is everybody? How are you? It's raining, it's pouring. Yes, that's exactly what it is. That was the paper shop. I've just driven straight past it. No papers for the patients this month. Thank you, GDC. My uh, surgery's been run as a non-profit at the moment. <laughs> By which I mean treatment is being provided at cost to the patients. They're paying the cost of their treatment and nothing else. The staff are drawing a salary, but I'm not. I think that counts as a non-profit, doesn't it? Non-profit doesn't mean have to mean free. It just means no profit. So, who would have thought there would be a private dental charity in East Kent? Who thought there'd be a private dental charity? So, last day of the month, a dreaded day. Well, we've got the uh, wages today and the rent tomorrow. So, you go from having a healthy but amount of money in the... Uh, <laughs> A high, a high balance in your current account and a low blood pressure to a low balance in your current account and a high blood pressure. The two swap over <clears throat> and you start reset and start again. Recycle one month, every month. So I had a, somebody rang at eight o'clock this morning. I don't know why, somebody rang me at uh, 10 to six yesterday morning. Fortunately, in the old days, uh, the um, there we are. I just uh, I just have to tap on the bit that I'm trying to video, and it adjusts it adjusts all the lighting and the white balance. The, the camera on this Pixel 2, I've got to say, is actually pretty good now. By which I mean, it does what you expect it to. Whereas the, the the old one was always I was always having sync issues, wasn't I? Because of it used to buffer and then it used to skip, and then the sound didn't match to the picture and everything. But no, the, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, wages. So, patients ringing in the morning, that's it, yeah. So, in the old, in the olden days, in ye olden ye days, um, if a patient rang you at six o'clock in the morning, you, uh, the phone used to ring and it used to wake you up. And they used to say, oh, I was just uh, ringing to see if you've got an appointment at half past eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> or, you know, my, uh, I've had a tooth out somewhere else and it's bleeding and you're the only dentist that's picked up the phone. So we don't really get much of that anymore. Um, even though the uh, surgery phone is switched through to my mobile all night, every night. Um, and that's because, of course, now you can put your mobile onto silent, can't you? You can tell it that not don't disturb me between 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock, say. Which is why these guys that rang at 10 to 6 didn't wake me up because my phone just refused. You know, I'm sorry, don't to sleep, can't get through. And they didn't leave a message. Although I rang back about half 7, just in case it's an emergency. You don't know, it might be some mother who's daughter's knocked all her teeth out and who needs urgent dental advice. Um, actually you sort of don't like, unlike the pharmacy, unlike the pharmacist on trolley who lives in constant hope that he's going to get a medical emergency that only he can solve, uh, actually while there are certain dental emergencies that only we can solve, um, I don't, I can't say I, I hope to get one, you know. Uh, it's uh, they are. I have had my share in the past, and they're not fun, you know. You can do something useful, but it's usually with a small child who's very upset and everything, and a parent who's also very upset. But uh, yeah, so I rang them back, and there's no reply. So there you go. So this guy rings me at 8 o'clock, and I don't know why he rang me at 8 o'clock, and it was obviously on the dot of 8 o'clock. There's no, 
nowhere on our website or on our Google listing or our Yahoo listing does it say that we open at eight o'clock. So I think that people in general don't tend to take any notice of these sort of things. They just tend to think, well, what's the earliest hour that I can ring? And on the off chance that they, somebody might pick up the phone, you know? And I think that they think that seven something is is probably too early but a minute past eight is okay you know and obviously there's a certain amount of self-serving interest in there because they are you no know, perhaps they're getting ready to go to work and so it doesn't suit them to wait until 8 30 which is our published opening they'd rather ring at eight when which is their published leaving you know <laughs> anyway it's just it's just a guy i did a filling for him uh, about two three weeks ago and he rang he rang and he said uh, look uh, you know I'm not in any not in any pain or any discomfort and to be honest with you I don't even know the fillings there until I until I poke it with my tongue and when I poke it with my tongue it gives me like a jolt you know makes me jump so, <laughs> you know, you feel like Tommy Cooper, don't you? Like the guy who went into the doctor and said, Doctor, whenever I, I do this with my arm, it hurts. And he said, well, don't do that. You're like, you know, it was a big filling. It was obviously quite close to the nerve. It was all done under rubber dam. We don't, we don't poke <laughs> about and try and create exposures. We look for exposures, we line every filling. You know, if it's if it's died, it's died, and it was probably on its way anyway. So, but I was said to him, the best thing to do is leave it and see if it settles down. Which, and people don't understand, do they? They want. My wife was saying this morning, this these are the, what they call the snowflake generation. They can't do anything. They can't make a decision. They got no skills. They got no life experience. Most of them are still living at home with their mothers. Um, they got no assets, and uh, if a tooth isn't completely painless straight away, they can't cope. They've got no coping skills. So, I know I said to him, look, your, your best bet, because the alternatives are, some of them are a lot less palatable than giving it a bit longer and uh, just see how it goes so anyway like five days later he's rung up again and he's got a note in the reception in the book that says question mark possible extraction so he does need other teeth out if for example he needs he won't have his lower wisdom teeth out which is fine i don't mind you can keep those but I've suggested to him that he has his upper wisdom teeth out to stop stop the chewing on the gum down the bottom. But he doesn't oh, he doesn't want to have any of that done. Or any of some other work I think he needs doing. He just wanted this one filling done. And now we've got question mark possible extraction. Which leads me to suspect that he's given it another three or four days and decided that the whole situation is intolerable and he can't have a tooth in his head that hurts when he pokes it with his tongue so um, we've he, he wanted to he was given two possible time slots and he, he rang up basically he rang up to say that he wanted the earliest possible time slot he was offered so I've gone down and done it all remotely and sent him a message by SMS to say come in at quarter past nine but well, we've only got half an hour and I think by the time he's repeated everything that I know already and described in his own half-hearted way what his symptoms are and I've explained to him again what the options are which are pretty binary I mean it's either root treat it in which case you have a, a hole in your bank balance but no hole in your mouth or uh, extract it which is cheaper but leaves you with no tooth 
and is only cheaper if you don't include the implant that's necessary to replace it. So, you know, he's caught behind between a rock and a hard place, isn't he, by virtue of the fact that he had this big problem when he came in. But my, my problem is this, and this is why my patients, or some of my patients at least, choose to see the hygienist for a scale and polish when in fact I could do a scale and polish for them on the spot that wouldn't involve them coming back and that is that they prefer to have the hygienist do the scale and polish than me and I would say that's not because I do in any way an inferior scale and polish in fact I do <laughs> my scale and polishes are very uh, clinically sound they are, I seek and destroy any scale to the calculus that's on their teeth. I polish all their teeth. You know, I do, if anyone in the practice gets a pocket chart, it's me that's done it. I do all the disclosing, I do all the toothbrushing instruction, you know, and yet some people still prefer to come and see the hygienist. And the reason is that uh, she caters much more for the market that sees a hygienist visit as a service like uh, having your hair done like having a massage you know like going to the spa having your nails done having your teeth done that's that's her market and she can take a, a 12 year old girl who I've just disclosed and done all the oral hygiene on and she can spend half an hour which is her standard appointment, doing something I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what she does. I can, if I polish someone's teeth for half an hour, they would have no teeth left. <laughs> so, but she seems to, you know, she seems to. All I ask for my hygienist is she doesn't contradict what I say because it kills a business if you've got two practitioners who are recommending separate things, you know? Let's just turn these wipers off a bit. My brother, who's a dentist, and I fell out. We didn't fall out, but we actually sold the practice and decided to divide the, the proceeds between the two of us because I was telling my patients that it was okay to have silver fillings and he was telling his patients that it wasn't that they they must have white fillings because the silver fillings were the work of the devil and because of that clinical difference of opinions let's put it that way um, we decided that we were going to go our separate ways and I can't, you know, if you're saying to patients, no, you've got to get the plaque control is the most important thing and you need, uh, like a manual brush is best at getting in the nooks and crannies and getting your plaque score down. And your hygienist is telling people to use an electric brush and that they should be flossing all the time that their plaque control's not really been sorted out. Um, then you've got a problem, haven't you? You, know, you just can't have that. You can't have you can't have the patients being exposed to two completely separate messages like that. So you have to get that sorted out. But I don't mind people saying, you know, and it stings a bit when you say to a patient, look, you know, you need a scan and polish. You can either come back and see the hygienist, or I can do it for you now. What would you prefer? And they say, I prefer to come back and see the hygienist. Well, you know, I mean, and I would prefer to come and see the hygienist, to be quite honest. I would, I'd far rather my teeth were descaled by some lovely soft creature who's got my head wedged between her boobs than some fat, hairy ass dentist who's going to really treat me like a Meccano kit. And the end result's the same, the oral health is the same, the experience is not the same. This is the problem. So. This patient's coming in, and uh, I'm going to spend half an hour just chatting with him, 
and then he's you know he's going to need all of that time to decide what to do isn't he he's seriously he's going to be you know half an hour later he's just going to be on the verge of saying yeah uh, i've decided to have it out or i've decided that you know to let you start a molar root treatment and uh And that'll be it. That'll be the end of the appointment. And then the next patient will be waiting in the waiting room. So what can you do with a patient like that, you know? My, see my, my problem is that again, I'm, I'm sort of too, uh, I'm dispassionate about the whole thing, you know? And it doesn't fit in with everyone. It fits in brilliantly with some people. They fit in brilliantly with people like me. You know the sort of people that go into Tesco's because they want a cinnamon stick, they walk straight up to an assistant and say, where is the cinnamon sticks? They want to get told exactly where the cinnamon sticks is, go and get one, go and buy it and go. That is me, all I, that is it. And that is most men, to be quite honest. But, um, so you know, he's gonna come in and he's gonna say, uh, and I'm gonna say to him, well, what's the problem? Are you still getting trouble with that too? Yes. Okay, right, here's your choice. We either try and save it, or we take it out. Notice I didn't say we save it, we try and save it, or we take it out. What do you want? <laughs> and he'll, he, he won't say it, but I know what he'll be thinking. He'll be thinking what I want is a nice, is a nice half hour discussion about the whole thing. Because I like to have things explained to me. And then I forget. So I like to have them explained to me again. You know? Like the guy who we spent two years shouting at who'd got gum disease, who then wrote me a snotty email saying, why didn't you tell me I had gum disease? <laughs> so, have we got another one? Have we got a junior version coming in? Anyway, I'll let you know how it goes. We'll see. I mean, if it is a, um, if we do have to do it, extract it, it's a low left seven, and it's very heavily filled and symptomatic. Ah, oh, ah, oh, I've just had a brain wave. I could just give him antibiotics, couldn't I? It's almost certainly hyperemic and hypersensitive. So a nice course of antibiotics. Ah, oh, why didn't I? Honestly, I spent over 25 years working in the health service. Did I learn nothing? Have I learned nothing? <laughs> Give him some antibiotics and kick him out. Oh, what a great idea. Then I can book him in for an hour and a half, can't I? And do a nice little atraumatic surgical extraction of his tooth. so stupid actually I'm so I'm so I prescribe antibiotics like 12 times a year seriously my um, my antibiotic prescribing book as comes with a quill pen and it's on parchment is that old we don't need to we don't prescribe a lot of antibiotics in fact I'm quite pleased that the sell-by date on these antibiotics is so uh, so long because otherwise they'd all go out of date. So what else? Oh, it's payday, yeah. So, I mean, you know, our pension staging date was the 1st of November, which means for some reason that we didn't have to pay any pensions in November. The first month we had to pay pensions for was December, and that was due by the 10th of January, at which point I wasn't even a dentist, so I held my hands up and say, well, forget that. So I think it got paid like day before yesterday, so it's about two weeks late. But it's the first payment, so you know, if they want to sue me, they can. And the other thing is that, I mean, this is just money that's not available for staff pay rises. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it just forces them to save money that they would otherwise have got in their disposable income. So it's going to depress wages. It's as simple as that. 
And the other thing is that, you know, I'm like, uh, how much is it, you know? Because obviously, what with the things being what they were, the end of January and everything, it's like, uh, there you go. So I'm thinking really the last thing I need is a fat pension payment to make on top. But in fact, it's, uh, it's only about 150 quid. We've got three members of staff. And I think on average, you know, it's about 50 pound per head per month. So good luck with that. Good luck retiring on that, that's all I can say. You're better off putting 50 pound into Bitcoin. Then you would be able to retire and start. But what's it going to go into some bloody government Ponzi scheme, isn't it? What do you think the government's going to do? Do you think they're going to save it up? Do you think they're going to save it up until the staff retire and then pay for an annuity for them to retire? Or do you think the government's just going to put it in the in the massive great box, mark money, and spend it, and let somebody else, some other government, worry about? refunding all the money and paying the pensions it's, it's, it's another scam isn't it another scam another government scam finding ways of taking money off of people and scamming them getting money now borrowing from the future that's what it is giving people the expectation that they're going to get money in the future and taking money off them now like the uh, like the dental scheme they promised us all seniority payments and then charged us all to provide seniority payments for the people who were entitled to them and never paid anything. And then when people like me became entitled to seniority payments, in other words, when the bill got, you know, when they were getting, there was the slightest chance of them paying out more money than they were getting in, or even paying back some of the money that they were supposed to already have, which they'd spent, they cancelled the whole thing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, that was the, that was the scheme. That was then. That was the scheme then. It's not the scheme now." Oh yeah, but I've, what about all the money I put into that scheme then, in the expectation of being entitled to the benefits of the scheme now? Ah, oh, it doesn't work like that, Sonny. <laughs> you only make the payments. You don't get the benefits, right? That's what the that's what the uh, government pension scheme is going to be like. Right, <clears throat> I'm a bit angry and cynical today, aren't I? Shut up. That's better. Alright, okay. I hope you're having fun with the pension scheme. If you are, let me know. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.